Good morning. It's that time of the week again. It's Groovy Tuesday. How are we all doing? Is there anybody there? Hopefully you can hear me. I've remembered to put the sound on. I've got my mic switched on. So hopefully it's all good to go. So just wait for, is there anybody out there? Anybody joining me today? Yes, here everybody comes. Super duper. Good morning, good morning, good morning. A little bit early today. It's nice to be early. So there we go. We've got all clear from Jilly. Thank you, Jilly. The sound is good. And I hope everybody else is good. Here we all come. Good morning, Jill, Andrea, Hilda, Hazel, Ken. All the happy little groovers are in the camp today. Good morning, good morning. There we go, there's Chili and Jane. Hello, hello, hello. Oh dear. Well, it's nice and sunny out today, so I thought I'd put a nice short sleeve shirt on. Sort of feel a bit summery. It was terrible weather the last couple of days. <laughs> but um, yes. So how are we all doing? Everybody okay? Good, good, good. Have you all done your homework? Yes, I'm sure you all have. I've seen what you've all been doing and up to on Groovy Worldwide. Absolutely beautiful. Some beautiful pieces using the, the Paisley plate where you're sort of really getting confident and sort of experimenting and coming up with all different ideas. So, oh, it's cold and wet with Jane Telford and Dahl. Well, hopefully we'll put a, a, a smile on your face this morning, Jane. So that's what it's all about. It's all about crafting, being happy, staying safe, enjoying the moment. As Barb says, take each day as it comes, one day at a time. Absolutely brilliant. So, gosh, I can't believe we're on week, where's my little notes gone? Week 17. Wow. Doesn't time fly? I know I'm having fun and I hope you are too as well. Beautiful, beautiful. So loads of people. Good morning, good morning. The sun in Argyle is, wow. But a big black cloud. Oh, don't worry about the clouds, Hilda. They'll blow away. Just keep focusing on that lovely sunshine. Yes, the sunshine definitely make, puts a smile on my face. So how about you? The weather can be a bit strange, can't it? So we've got lots to do today. So we're going to finish off our lovely bookmark. And did you hear the exciting news yesterday? Barb announced in the Shack Shack that the lovely Linda Williams, technology permitting, the lovely Linda Williams will be joining us in our Groovy Tuesday. I'm so looking forward to that. And I think it's going to be great fun. And Linda's going to be really sort of delving into some beautiful white work but we'll come up to that a little bit later. I don't want to spoil it uh, and give too much away. Um, yeah, that I'm really, really excited about that. And I think it's going to be brilliant. And we're going to see how it works with the dual screens. And yeah, it, with this new piece of software we have, I've, what Jim says is, is there's so many different things we can do with it. And we had a bit of a play yesterday. And um, technology has its glitches like it always does but we um we think we've worked it out so jim's just got to sort a few things out for the lovely linda and fingers crossed next tuesday lindy will be with us as well so i'm really really excited about that so oh you missed out marion yeah it was all the big announcement yesterday in the the shack shack with barb via camelot so yeah, really looking forward to that. And I'm going to learn as well at the same time. <laughs> so everyone learns. You're always learning at all different times, don't you? Because we do things and you think, oh, that's the way to do it. And then someone else will show you a different way. And you go, oh, that's an easier way. So, to, and to have someone like Linda Williams in the building, well, virtually in the building, amazing. No pressure, Linda, if you're watching. Technology will work perfectly. It really will. <laughs> Just don't touch any buttons. 
Okie dokie. Right, so where are we going today? I think we're we're all good to go. I think everybody's warmed up and ready. You've got your tea, your coffee, your water. Nice and chilled, nice and relaxed. I'll calm down now. I was just so excited about that news with Linda. So, um, yes, all good fun. Okay, so should we have a recap on what we've done over the past couple of weeks? Just so that if anybody's tuning in for the first time, you can obviously watch back on our previous um, episodes from on our Clarity YouTube page. They're all in one place. So let's have a look. We're looking at the beautiful bookmark. And this was my sample I made to show you where we were heading. And this is what I've been working on over the last couple of weeks. So I did my homework. I went in and I finished off all my colouring in. And I kept with the, the blues and the, the oranges because I thought it was really sort of, it's feminine, but it's also masculine as well. And when you combine it with the Antarctica paper, remember I said about choosing the backing paper before you start to colour, and then it just helps. Because if you've got all multicolour and then you've got to find a nice paper to go behind it, it can be a little bit difficult. Whereas if you choose your backing paper first, you can then use your colour palette, your pens or your pencils. And we looked at the different, um, we looked at the pencils and we also looked at the Perga colours. Now, did you know we've got the Perga colours on our offer of the week? These are half price. So if you've been sitting on the fence with these, then it's a perfect opportunity. It's until nine o'clock on Monday and they're half price. They're about 12, 13 pounds instead of 25, 26 pounds. And it's a beautiful rainbow of colours. So I've got a few missing out one. I've obviously got them somewhere. And you've got 30 beautiful water-based pens. Now, not only are they perfect for using with parchment, because they've got the Pergamano brand on them, but they're also fantastic for your everyday crafting. So if you're stamping out and you're colouring in, the beautiful postcards we have available, beautiful for that. And we also looked at um, how we can tone down the colours. Remember I brought in the water brushes and scribbled out on the mix mat. And if you use the water brush dry on parchment, then you get a really nice soft tone as well. So if you've got the bug, then, I mean, personally, I'd even, for me, at that price, I'd get a second set. And then depending if you've got grandchildren or the children, then these are a perfect gift for somebody as well, aren't they? So if you're interested in those, let's say they're the offer of the week until nine o'clock on Monday of next week. Beautiful. Let me just show you the, the difference between the nibs, just in case you're not sure what I mean by double-ended. So if I come in on this camera here, and if I take that off of one end and that off of the other end, you'll see how you've got two different size nibs. So the white one is the fine, the super fine end, and then we have the bullet nib, which is for larger areas. So if you was working with your design and you wanted to get into these tiny little areas, then really the fine nib is perfect for that. But if you wanted to color larger areas, like the letterboxes, then the larger bullet nib is perfect for that as well. And again, don't forget, you can scribble it out onto a mix mat. You can pick up, if you're using it on your, on your stamping projects, then what you would do, you put it on your mix mat, pick it up with a wet paintbrush or a wet water brush, and then you can get some beautiful watercolor, especially on our um, watercolor journals. They'd be fantastic for that. But again, you can, they're perfect for your parchment craft as well. So that's what we was looking at last week. We sort of, we put our words in, let's pop that to one side. And I finished my coloring in with my pencils. And remember when I was coloring in, if you remember from last week, I can just about remember what I did yesterday, let alone last week. Okay, is that when we was working on the back and I was coloring in, because for me, with the pencils, you get more flexibility in relation to if you go wrong. So what I was using last week also with the colouring in was the light wave panel. Do you remember? 
and how if I pop if I'm going to bring in the the light panel if I pop that underneath there this will probably really show up my bad coloring in there oh no it's not too bad but you can really see with the aid of the light panel I could go right up to the edges and get a really nice let me see if I can zoom in a little bit uh, there we go so with the assistance of the light panel and my blending pen, I could go right up to the edges. And I'm not saying you can't do it without, you can. But for me, it was a tip that I picked up from Tina Cox when coloring in, it was a really, to have the light source underneath. And we've got these on offer as well. Barb spoke to me yesterday morning and said, oh, we got these on special offer. I'm gonna show them in the Shack Shack this morning. So I said, no, nope, but we have now. So we've got the large one for those of you real addicts and then you've got a, the mini one as well so it's more portable so if you've got the large starter kit or the small starter kit we've got one of each size so i just thought we'd have a look at that while we're talking about coloring in so i thought what we're going to do today is we're going to finish off our little project and i'm going to show you let me just zoom out a little bit Whee, there we go. We have choices, like we always do with the Groovy system and the projects we're working on. We're going to do a little bit of pico cutting. See, on this one here, I've just done a little bit in those areas just to allow the colour of the paper to come through. So I thought we'd recap on a little bit of pico cutting, which we've done previously. And then we're going to assemble it because trying to get a flimsy piece of paper and a piece of parchment into the bookmark sleeves can be a bit of a struggle. But there's a top tip that I got from Barbara on how to do that, which I will share with you later. And then once we've done that, what we're gonna do, we're gonna plan ahead a little bit, ready for next week and what Linda is gonna show us. But we're not gonna rush it. We're gonna take our time and I'm gonna spoil you with that information a little bit later. Because I think we need to just concentrate. Project completion, as Barb calls it. We're gonna finish our lovely bookmark. So I'm gonna have a sip of coffee because I've just been waffling way too much. Oh dear, oh dear. See for me, Groovy really makes me excited because it gives me that sense of achievement quite easily and quite quickly. And for those of you that have joined the Groovy journey right back from episode one, that have had the starter kit for a long time and only just decided to get it out of the packaging, it's great because by taking it back to basics, we can sort of break it down into the different elements. And then with the assistance of the lovely Linda next week, where she's going to show us some exquisite artwork, which I still need to, I haven't got it right yet. So that's why I don't feel that I'm the right person to show you. Barb can do it. Linda can do it. But I'm, I suppose it's white work and patience. That's what I blame it on. So, um, yeah, so I'm really looking because I'm going to be learning as well. <laughs> okay. So for this part of the the hour what we're going to need let's get all our bits and pieces together so i need um, some super foam now if you're going to use your light panel then you may want to go with your your white super foam that's great isn't it a nice white screen i'm using the 12 by 12 because it gives me the larger area so if you're going to use your light panel then you want your white super foam but i'm going to keep it simple and i'm going to use the black super foam and again i've got the 12 by 12 so we're gonna need our super foam. Now, if you've only got the A4 Pico foam, then you put your super foam, your white super foam underneath, okay? And then I'm gonna need my two needle bold tool for my perforating. Then I have my scissors of choice, which are my ring lock, but we also have the exclusives. And we also have our perk cutters or our little squizzers, as I like to call them. So we're going to need those and we're going to need those. And you know what I've done? Oh, 
I did put my emergency groovy guard back because <laughs> I've got no chance of finding it in this room. I really need to have a tidy up. I'm sure I had it here yesterday, but I've got my emergency one. So we're going to need our groovy guard, our scissors, our perforating tools, and a tumble dry sheet. Okay, so I think that's all we're going to need for this stage. So I'll give you a few minutes just to get all those bits together. So um, have you had, have you given Pico cutting a go? It is one of those, it's a skill. It really is. A lot of the, the different techniques within parchment craft are skills. And some people will get them and some people won't get them. Like the, the white works that Linda's going to show us next week. I just, I struggle with that. I can do white work, which we've shown over the past couple of weeks, but that's easy white work. Um, and what Linda's going to show us just takes it up that, I say that level, it takes it right up to that level. And, um, and I know that you're really going to enjoy that next week. So, okay. So, 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 so. Let's get started, shall we? We've got all our bits together. Are we ready to start pico cutting? Well, first we have to perforate. So I'm gonna let's have a look. I'm gonna pop my work to one side, my finished piece, and the backing paper. We'll pop that to one side. So when we come to do our perforating, we perforate from the front. And when we've done all the previous work, we've been working on the back. And the reason we perforate from the front, because where we puncture the parchment, if you've given this a go already, what you'll find is that it's sort of on the back, it's sort of raised, it's sort of very scratchy. And we want that hidden. We don't want to, if we want to, we're not going to protect our work. We want a really nice sort of smooth finish. Okay. So you have choices. You can either do the pico cutting along with me. Or what you can do, remember when we did those butterflies and we infilled with the grids, you could take the grids and you could infill the design as well and perforate or emboss. And you'd get a, another different look as well. But I thought just to sort of carry it over, we do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And where's my little bits and pieces? He says saying a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Where are they gone? I I think I left them over here. Let me just grab those whilst you're admiring that. I had little bits that I was practicing on, didn't I? So I'm just rummaging through all my paperwork. Just bear with for a moment. Ah, yeah, this is what I was, we was talking about. Yes, yes, yes. So let's have a look. Grab my grids. This is what we were talking about here. Remember where we did the, the patterns inside the butterflies? So you can do that if you choose to using the grids. Okay, so if you got to that stage and you think, oh, I've really enjoyed what I'm doing and I don't want to ruin it by pico cutting, I still haven't mastered it, then you can use this to infill. Okay. So like, for example, on this one here, this is my practice piece. So if you wanted to do a little bit of infilling, I know I digress slightly. Let me just bring that into play just to, for those of you that don't want to do pico cutting, if I take my plate, mate, pop the grid. So we've got them in the, the normal size and the mini size. And then what we can do working on the back tape it down with a groovy tab to stop it moving around. So if you want to emboss, then let's another groovy tab. It's just giving you different options. And so you can see the different effect. And then if I take my number two tool and we're just going to emboss into those. Remember exactly what we did with the butterflies. See, or you could just take the pattern that's on the plate itself an infill. The decision and the choice is entirely up to you. Okay, so if I turn that over, we can see 
how you can start to infill that design. So that's if you want to do some embossing in that area. And again, we've colored this on the finish piece, but you could still go over and do some embossing on that as well, if you choose to. Now, if you wanted to perforate, then we work from the front, the same principle. We just hold that in place with our groovy tabs to stop it moving around and hold it in place. And this time we would use the one needle bowl tool and just holding the tool upright and just perforating. This is where the groovy guard comes into play, you see? And then we can just perforate our design. Now the grid forces you to keep the tool upright. There we go. We'll just do a, a little bit there so that you can see. So you, you, you do have options if you're not into the, the Pico cutting. Okay, there we go. Let's have a look at that. So if you wanna do some perforating in the design, you can, or if you want to do some embossing, you can do that as well. Decisions, decisions. Okay, but we're gonna, I'm gonna head towards Pico cutting. So let's bring in my piece of artwork and I'll try and keep this so that we can get a really nice, good angle on it. Are we all okay? Are we all good to go? Ready to rock and roll and get groovy? Good. Good, good, good. Now, when you're perforating, it's not so bad on a, a one needle and a two needle tool, but I, I, it's just habit. If I take my tumble dry sheet and I pop it underneath, what that will do, it will lubricate the needles every time I perforate. As I say, it's not that important with just a two needle, one and two, because there's not that many needles on the tool. But if you're using one that's got four, five, six, or seven, the parchment really does pull up. So it's a good way of just lubricating, lubricating, easy for me to say, not, lubricating the needles. You can use Percosoft where you dip the, the needles into it. But for me personally, I just prefer the tumble dry sheet. So to start off with, we're gonna hold the tool upright and we're gonna perforate on the inside of the line. I'm gonna grab my glasses because despite having really bright lights in here, there we go. So we're gonna hold the tool upright and we're gonna perforate. Now I'm gonna deep perforate and what I mean by that, I'm pushing, you don't have to push it all the way in, but I'm pushing, oops, went off there. And you go back into the hole you come out of so what you're doing is you're increasing one hole at a time. And the two needle tool gives you that perfect pitch between each of the holes. Okay, so we're gonna go along and it's not a race, you just go at whatever speed, speed? Oh, I'm really getting my words mixed up today. Speed you wish to. And then we're gonna go in and say you're just increasing one at a time. Now I'm gonna turn my work round because I'm happy with the position in which I'm working. Then we go along and we continue with our perforations. See, nice and easy. And the groovy guard is holding my parchment because we're working on a smaller area, we're not working on a larger piece. It's really, um, it's good to use the guard because it holds it in place. If you're learning Pico cutting, then the two needle bold will give you bigger perforations. And that's what I'm using because you still get a lovely effect. Okay. Because I'm just seeing all these questions popping up. Am I using a two needle bold or a two needle fine? For this, I'm using a two needle bold just because it makes it easier for me. And as you get confident with your Pico cutting, then you can then move down to the two needle fine and you'll get a finer looking Pico cut. Okay, 
And then, yeah, so we've perforated that one. Okay. And then we're going to swap around. Now, what you'll find is that it will catch on your tumble dry sheet. So just be careful when you lift that off. And then we're going to do the next one. So again, groovy guard in place. And then I'm turning my work so it's more comfortable for me and so that I can see where I'm going as well. And we're just going to carry on. Even just by doing the, the perforations, the perforations? The perforating, that you don't have to pico cut. Who says you do? Nobody. It makes a really nice design on the inside as well. You see? And then we just go around. And I'm just turning the tool slightly just to go around those curves. Okay. Nice and easy. And we're just going to go along. And then turn it around. Can we see that? Okay, yeah. Hopefully that's nice and clear. Just try and keep away from the, the edge. You don't want to come in too far because it will look a little bit strange. But you don't want to go too close either because it will disintegrate the, the white line that we've embossed. Okay. And then we go down. So that's my perforating done. So if I hold this up, just carefully remove that. So now if I hold that up, we can see where we've done our perforating. Okay. And it's the same on the other end as well. We all good with that? Wasn't too bad, was it? It's nice to do small areas just to get the confidence. I've already had a warm up and I've done mine on a practice piece. Horses for courses, everyone sort of you decide what works for you, whether you need to have a warm up or whether you're better off going in cold. It's all about just getting confident, it really is. Okay. I've just seen little questions popping up and down. Oh, okie doke. Can I zoom in a little bit more? Of course I can, Sue. Let me see. If I come back in, I'm going to come in on this one. No, actually, camera three. I'm going to walk around. I've got to walk around to zoom in on this one. So that I, because where I come to do the pico cutting, I think this will be really key. So if I come in, see if I can get this right, I'm going to go that way. So I'm going to come in slowly and then I'll move the artwork probably, probably about there. There we go. See? Producer, director, there we go. How's that, Sue? Super duper. Okay, I've just got to remember to keep it <laughs> in that area there. Okay, weapon of choice. I'm going with my lovely ring lock. And it's really strange is that when you start to use your scissors, they become personal to you. And what happens? If I go somewhere and I'd forgotten my scissors, it takes me a while. I could use somebody else's, but it takes me a while to adjust. It's really strange. The scissors don't actually mold, but it, it's really weird. It's one of those things that you can pick up two pairs of the same scissors, one that are yours and one that may be on a workshop or something like that, or you, you've gone to a friend's and you're borrowing theirs, and it will feel different. It's really, really strange. I don't know why, whether it's psychological, whether it's just my head thinking, oh, these are not mine, they're not going to do the same. They were they're exactly the same scissors. But yeah, strange. Okay. So what we're going to do now, we're going to do some pico cutting. So if you're new to pico cutting, what we're doing is this bit here in the middle is going to fall away which is what we call the waist. So the body of your scissors will always be over, <coughs> excuse me, the waist area. Let's see if I can turn it this way because my hands will be more comfortable in this position. And 
the point of the scissors are pointing towards the line. Now, if I was to pico cut across the line like this, my pico is going to be on the waist. And that was a, a mistake I made earlier on um, when I was learning to pico cut. I didn't realize that there was a difference. I thought we were just snipping the parchment and it would get the effect. But it really does, is important the way you do it. Now, some people will snip towards them. Some people will snip away from them. Some people will twist. Some people won't. So if I take my groovy guard just so I can lean on, what I'm going to do, hopefully we can see this, I'm just popping the tip of my scissors in. Okay, I'm not going in very far. Let's see if I come back a little bit so we're more central to the screen. Can we see that okay? Everyone happy with that? Good. Okay. So I'm going to put my glasses on. <laughs> glasses, old age is kicking in. So it's the tip of the scissors in, and then I'm just going to squeeze gently and until I see that point, and then snip. Squeeze and snip. Squeeze and snip. And I'm turning my work because my hand is in a comfortable position. So I'm not even twisting on this one. I'm just going with the flow. And what we'll do on this one, I'm not going to twist. I'm going to try not to twist. I'm just going to squeeze and snip to see the different look that we'll get. Okay. So it's just at the tip of the scissors. Squeeze until you see that point. That was a bit dodged, that one. Turn my work. Make the work come to you. Okay. So I've done that edge there. So now I'm going to turn the work round so I can come along this edge here. And then I'm just going to take my hat. I'm just going to move it back a little bit and then I'll read because my hand was falling off. Even though I'm using the 12 by 12, my hand was falling off. I've got all this space and I'm hanging off the edge of the, the foam. See, and then just snip, snip. And I'm just going very, very slowly just to start with. And this may look absolutely pants because I'm not twisting. Again, it's what you get used to. Because I do normally twist. I don't know why I'm not twisting, but there you go. Just to show the variation. And then we're going to turn that round. There we go. So, let's have a look. And then we're just going just to turn it. It's funny, your hand feels comfortable in a particular position. And if your hand is comfortable, then you're going to enjoy it more, aren't you? If your hand is feeling uncomfortable, and uh, then I think that would reflect in your snipping as well. Okay. So let's have a look if I caught all of that. There we go. So I've done... Where are we going? Uh, back a bit. There we go. So that's my... There's a couple of dodgy ones there. But in the whole scheme of things, you're not going to be getting a magnifying glass up and really going in and going, oh, that one's not right, are you? <laughs> Hopefully you're not. So let's have a look at the next one then. So if we pop that just about there. And then this time, I'm going to twist as I snip. And we can have a look at the difference. So I'm going to go in and then tilt the scissors towards me. Okay. And then as I tilt, I snip. But as I tilt, I'm sort of squeezing the scissors to see that pico point. Okay. Now, I know a couple of ladies have been asking about the two needle split. I need to have a play with that. I've never used it myself personally. So I need to have a play and have a conversation with the lovely Linda 
to see what the right way is of using that. And what we'll do is over the next couple of weeks, then I'll do a little bit of a lesson on the two needle split to see, but I've got to master it myself first, if that makes sense. So don't think I'm, I'm ignoring the questions. It's just all about just finding the time and the, the, having a practice, just like you at home. Okay, so we're going to do the final, coming in for the final home run now. So it's just, but again, see the groovy card again is really good because we're working on a smaller piece, then it's great for holding our parchment in place whilst we do our cutting. And you need to have an emergency groovy guard in case you can't find, it's like those break glass in an emergency, isn't it? I keep this one in an emergency place so that I know where to find it. I just need to remember to pop it back. Okay, so there we go. So now we've completed that one there. So that's the one where I've twisted. Okay, and then this is the one where I didn't twist. So there is a slight variation on it. I suppose for me, I find I get a nicer result by doing a little twist. Okay. Very, very, very therapeutic. How are we getting on? Have we, we managed to do some Pico cutting? I love seeing what you do on Groovy Worldwide. It's, or if I don't comment, it's not that I'm ignoring you. I, I just flick through. Normally at city o'clock in the morning, I go through and I'll have a look and I say, wow. And it's amazing to see what, how the confidence is grown from people that are just starting out or started back at the beginning of the Groovy Tuesdays. It, it's fantastic. It really is. And you know what I say? Don't be scared to share your work. We've all got to start somewhere. And if you're not sure, just ask a question. I've always said it, and Barb said the same, no question is ever a silly question. Well, there are some silly, but you know what I mean, don't So. Okay. So let's have a look. What are some of the comments we've got today? So Julia, that's a good idea of the two needle split. I've had it since years, but I've never used it. Okay, because when I tried it, <laughs> the result was rubbish. Exactly, and I, I haven't had a chance to play with it. I did speak to Linda very briefly yesterday, and she tried to explain it, but by the, that time in the day, it was going in one ear and out the other. So, um, so I, I will practice, and I will have another conversation, and then once I'm happy, I will then share that with you as well. So, okay. So let's have a look. So this is our Pico piece, all cut out. Did you do the same or did you go in and infill with some embossed dots or some perforations? What did you do? Choices. Another question there, Jennifer. Paul, do we Pico cut on foam or hard surfaces? For me personally, some people hold it in their hand when they're cutting because they feel that when they've got the tips of the scissors, where's my scissors gone? Hiding, hiding under my groovy guard. Some people will hold it in their hand when they're working because they can gauge how far their scissors are going in. Now, one sort of rule that if you go in too far and your parchment turns red, then you've definitely gone in too far. <laughs> it's never happened. So, yeah. so some people find it more relaxing holding it in their hand. I prefer personally to work on the flat and you do need to have a foam underneath. A hard surface isn't any good because if you're working on a hard surface, there's nowhere for the scissors, the tips of the scissors to go into. And they do need to go into something. They need to have that. It's the same as with the groovy, with the tracing out. If you've got the solid plate, the acrylic plate, and you try and trace out, nothing happens. By having that groove, then what happens, the parchment stretches. So it's the same principle when you're pico cutting. You need to have a little bit of give. So like the your finger is quite givey, isn't it? 
So therefore, you've got that area for the scissors just to get under the parchment. And it's the same with a foam mat, whether you use the Pico foam or the Super foam. You just need to be able to get under that parchment so the tips of the scissors go in so that you can snip. Okay. So any more questions on there? What's a two needle split? I've never heard of this. Okay, so a two needle split I, is meant to do what it says. It's meant to split the parchment to give a pico effect if you struggle with your pico cutting. Um, I learned, I say the hard way, I didn't learn the hard way. I learned how to pico cut, it took me six months. So I've never really ventured down that two needle split. But we will cover it over the coming months because I think it's nice to sort of experiment with the different tools that we have available in the Pergamano range. And it's just finding that time to, to play. Okay, I know we're gonna run out of time, so I really wanna finish this off. I will try and pick up some more questions as we go along. So if I miss them, it's not that I'm ignoring you, it's just that they, they go up and up and up. Okay, so show, show, show. We've got our beautiful Pico piece. I've got my gorgeous, I've gone with the Antarctica double-sided paper and it's an eight by eight designer paper and I've just cut it so that it is two inches wide. Okay, so it's eight inches long and two inches wide. So the parchment will just sit on there perfectly. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're now, I'm gonna show you a really good tip on how to pop it into the bookmark sleeve because that's one of the tricks okay because this is flimsy and if you've done a lot of pico cutting so if this was really beautiful like one of Josie's lace plates then you've done a lot of pico cutting it's going to be very flexible and you don't want to ruin it ruin it ruin it so a tip i got from barb many many moons ago it's a thing called a ruler so you need to have a ruler that fits inside your bookmark sleeve. Now, unfortunately, the Pergamano ruler is a little bit too wide. It just, because you've got the depth to it, it won't go in there. So you need to find, I mean, I had an old fashioned wooden ruler. See, like, it, it just doesn't go. Okay, so you need a, a skinny ruler. And what we're gonna do is I'm not even gonna stick this down because I don't need to stick it down. I'm gonna pop it onto my ruler. So I've got a little bit of the edge of the ruler sticking out. I'm gonna open my bookmark sleeve. I'm trying to do this. See, I did this earlier and it without the cameras on. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna push it in and you're gonna slowly ease the ruler in at the same time. I'm trying not to get the, the reflection of the light on. But what that does, oh, see the ruler gives it that rigid thing. You just need to make sure that your paper and parchment isn't too tight. There we go, and you slowly ease it in, pull the ruler out, and then what I can do is now just gently, so I can just gently ease that in now so that it goes right to the end. And that is how you pop your work into the bookmark, okay? It's easy when, when, <laughs> when you know, when someone like Bar goes, oh, this is what you do. It's, it's obvious really, but I always used to sort of just try and push it in. And then the parchment, we know with the parchment that it, it will buckle, won't it? If you crease it and then you've got to start again. So again, a really good tip, skinny ruler, or you just want something that's long and flat that will fit inside your bookmark cat sleeve with plenty of space, okay? But I say, unfortunately, the, the Pergamano one is just a little bit too wide that it just won't go in there. So, so that is that project completed. So I can't wait to see on Groovy World Wire all your finished pieces, whether you've done a bookmark. This could be a beautiful border just on a card. It doesn't have to be a bookmark. Um, 
it could just be down the edge of a card, just very elegant. We could have the designer paper larger and it just goes down the edge. Remember we showed how the verse doesn't need to be, where's that gone? Let me go to the overhead so I don't look silly looking for it. Oh yeah. So it, you can go with your verse that way. So it doesn't have to be landscape. You can have it portrait as well. It all depends on what you want to say, if you want to say anything. Okay. So how we do, wow, 22 already. Okay. Right, this is the fun part now. And breathe. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a basic design ready for next week. And let me just show you. I found I went through the, the art boxes and I found because I I I struggle to do this. Oh, struggle to speak. I struggle to do this type of white work because I'm impatient. And I know a lot of you um, people, a lot of people watching have requested this, how do we do this, how do we do that? We've only ever done white work where we've, we've completed four areas, okay? So for example, where we've done the white work on the bookmark, this is all completely white. There's no depth of shading or anything like that, okay? So what Linda is gonna showcase over the next couple of weeks or next week, is this effect. You see how you create the illusion of a vein within a leaf or a petal or a shape, okay? So this is a piece, it's, this is Linda's artwork. I found it in the, in the cupboard and it shows how you gradually build it up. But what I always struggle with is leaving that central area. Let me bring it in on this camera. I always struggle of leaving that area black or gray and I get carried away. And before I know it, um, what happens is I've done the whole petal or the whole leaf. So Linda's very kindly offered to join us in the, the Groovy Tuesday Shack next Tuesday and show us how we can create this. And we're not gonna complete it all in one session. Absolutely not because it is, Linda has been shouting at the screen. She was saying, it takes time, it's patience, and I want to learn it as well. And it's something that I struggle with. So I'm in no position to sort of try and show you exactly how that works when we've got the beautiful Linda Williams that can share that, with, share that information with us. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create um, a blank, okay, to create, so we've got something to work towards. Now, depending on whether you've got the small starter kit or the large starter kit, we can complete this together, okay? And there's a, a couple of tips, and I'm gonna take you through on the small starter kit, for those of you that have got the small nested squares, and the larger starter kit, so that everyone can take part, because I think you're really going to enjoy, I know I'm going to, and you'll get so much out of it. And we'll practice, when we come to do it next week, we'll do it on a practice piece. We're not gonna go straight into our work, but at least if you see where we're heading, then it'll give you an idea and you think, oh, yeah, I like that, I wanna give that a go. It's pattern building, using the beautiful Paisley plate. And, then you can decide whether you want to replicate that pattern or the design, or whether you just want to take the design on its own and just do that as a piece. It's entirely up to you. So let me show you what I'm waffling on about. Okay, so I've got my little bits of prep here just to show you. And they do look slightly different because the nested squares are different on the two starter kits. So if I zoom out a little, see, this is all about pattern building, okay? So it's exactly the same concept and layout, but they look slightly different. Okay, can we see that okay? Yeah, there we go. So this design here is using the nested squares from the small starter quit, quit the small starter kit. And then this one here 
is using the nested squares from the larger starter kit. Now, if I bring in the nested squares from the small starter kit, you're going to say, well, how do you get a bigger square? Look, it only goes up to, to that size. So I'm going to show you a really easy way of extending the little squares to make a bigger square. Now, if I lay this over the top of one another, they're just fractionally different. You can just see a slight difference between the two. It, it gives it like a drop shadow effect. Okay. Now, again, you can use any shape you wish, whether you've got nested circles, nested squares, the octagon, the hexagon, it's entirely up to you. But it's all about the pattern building and how easy it is to achieve. Do you want to give it a go? It's it's very addictive once you do it, and it's all about the positioning. And I, I spent about an hour this morning working out what was the right square and getting it right so that it looked right and they looked the same based on the two different starter kits. Okay, I reckon we should give it a go, don't you? So what we're going to do, I'm going to do this on the little starter kit just to show you, and I'll also show you on the larger starter kit. So we've got the little plate mate, okay, and we have a little nested square. So let's just pop that into place. Now you may want to watch this first and then you could watch this on rewind later and repeat the process, okay. We're going to need an A5 piece of parchment, okay, now I'm going to take my soft mat out because I need to work on a harder surface. I'm going to take my tumble dry sheet and I'm going to wipe it over all over. Okay. Then I'm going to position my parchment. This is just for the smaller starter kit. I'm going to position it so it's lined up with the top of the plate and it's lined up with the edge. Okay. Hold it down with my groovy tabs. I'm actually going to hold it down on the bottom as well, just because I can. Now I'm going to take my emergency groovy guard. Okay, who's borrowed my emergency groovy guard? Where's it gone? Oh no, I'm in big trouble now. I've lost my emergency groovy guard. Ah, there it is. Okay, it's always a good idea to have a second emergency groovy guard. Right, because we want to extend this square, what we don't want to do, we don't want to go, I'm going to come in a little bit on this. So let me just zoom in. There we go. Ray, focus. What we don't want to do is go right up to that corner because the tendency to happen is that although you go up to that corner, it goes round a little bit, so you'd get a little bit sticking down. Okay. Yes, Jane, you do need free groovy guards, don't you? <laughs> so what we're going to do, I'm going to put normal pressure on, but as I come towards the end, I'm going to lift off. I don't want a solid light. And this was a tip that I picked up from Barb. So if I do it, I'm going to do it towards me because I find that easier. So I'm going to come down. And then as I get towards the end, I'm going to lift off. It's like a flick. And I'm going to do the same there as well. And then I'm going to repeat on this part. So we're doing down and flick and down and flick. Now, if I hold this up, can you see where I've sort of flicked away, I've sort of lifted off. It's a finer line, okay? And it's the same over here as well. And what that does is that when we come to realign it, you don't get a permanent end and start, okay? So what we're gonna do now, I've taken a piece of copy paper that is either a five inch square or a 12 and a half centimeter square. And this is gonna be my template. So if I remove my groovy guard, my groovy tabs, 
from top and bottom so it doesn't stick. I'm going to hold that just on the parchment and then I'm going to slide it along until I see the first line. Okay, and it doesn't have to be exact, it's just a guide. So once I'm there, I'm going to line it back up with the top of the plate, but also this here falls back into the slots. Okay, so then I'm going to make sure I'm happy. I'm going to just bring my head over a little bit, press that down, put the one at the bottom. I'll just take my piece of paper just to see that I haven't gone too far out. Look, see, and it sits just inside those lines. Then I'm going to take my groovy guard and then I'm going to continue that line down there. And now you can't see where they've joined up. I'm going to come round here and we're going to do the flick again. So it's down and flick off. Flick off? Yes. Flick away. <laughs> flick away. <laughs> right, okay, that could have been dangerous. And then we're going to flick as we come down. Flick. Okay, and we can see now how we've got that fine point. Then we're going to turn it round. We're going to repeat the same process. I'm going to take the groovy tab and pop it up here. Now I know, because I've done this several times this morning, I'll use the piece of paper, but I know that this edge of the parchment is lined up with the edge of the plate, and I'm going to tape it down just to show you, but I will show you with the piece of paper just to prove what I'm saying. If I take that, see, I just need to come over a little bit because I can't see that little line. I just need to come over a fraction. But it's near enough just there. There we go. And then you just feel it go back into the grooves there. Okay, just test it with your little template. That's it, perfect. Okay, then it's gonna come round. Down. Then we're going to come down, we're going to do the flick again. And flick. And now, because we've got the two sides, this is easy because that slots into there, that slots into there. Hold it in place, just bring my head over a little bit just to make sure I am, because you can feel it. There we go, that's about right there. Hold that in place. Cross there. And then down. So now we have taken the small square to make a larger square. Okay, but now I want to get a square in the center. How am I going to do that? Easy peasy. It's called a ruler and a white pencil. So I'm working on the back. I'm gonna go corner to corner, and then I want my white pencil. I'm doing it on the back, just drawing across. Okay. Bring that back into play. And then these straight lines will go into the four different corners of the square, see? And then for the small groovy plate, we want the third one from the middle. And we're just gonna trace that square out, okay? So that's what we're gonna get. Now, if we're doing it with the larger one, it's a lot more simpler, because what we're gonna do with the larger one is, if I take my plate mate here, we piece the parchment, lays across like we always do, we line it up so it's central, and we trace out the large two outer panels, and then it's the second one in the middle. Okay, so that's what, if you're going with the larger one, it's the two outside lines, 
and the second one from the middle. Okay, and that will give us virtually the same size. Okay, it's fractional between the two different ones. There we go, look, that's the, the large one underneath. So we've just got a bigger square on the smaller one in the middle. Okay, so now it's all about positioning. So if I bring in my lovely paisley plate, I'm going to go to the small one first because, again, it's all about the positioning of the design. When we turn it round, what we want to do, let's have a look, let me get, because it's different for each one. So for the small, if you've extended your small nested square, then what you're going to do is this inner line is going to line up with this line here, okay? And then the top line is going to line up with the outside line of that box. So now when I turn that round, I'm going to pop that on that line there. That lines up, and you can feel it fall into the into the groove. Okay, and I'm going to pop that down there. We're going to use the number two tool to just trace out this inner leaf because this is the one that Linda's going to teach us next week on how to create that beautiful effect. And then with the number one tool, I'm going to go nice and crisp on just the outline. Okay. So slowly does it. You don't want to jump out. And then we're going to come around here. And just complete. We're just completing the outline. That's all we're doing. Okay. So this is what we're gonna we're gonna do. So just to recap, if you're using the small nested squares that you've extended, then the inner line is gonna line up with the edge of this box, and the top line is gonna line up with the inner part of that box. And what you do is you swing it round and you do all four of them. And what that will give you is this, okay? So it's symmetrical, we, we've done all the work, we're having, the by using the lines of the frame and the lines on the plate makes it easier, okay? It took me a while to work it out, but I just thought this design, I spoke to Linda, I said, Linda, would this work for that style of shading? She went, yep. Yeah. She said, you don't want it too small and you don't want it too big. So this will be perfect. Okay. So that's using the, the small squares. So again, just to recap, the inner part of the frame lines up with this one. And the inner part of the box lines up with the top. So you're going up against that one and up against that one. So that when you position that in place, you can then trace out your design. Okay, hopefully I haven't confused you too much. <laughs> okay, then for the larger one, if you're using the larger nested square, then what you're gonna do for this one is it's still that same inner line with that box, but the outer line needs to line up with the edge of the plate. So let me show you, if I spin that round, so I'm lining up in there and I'm just gonna ease that up until that line lines up with the edge of the plate. So the outer line is lining up with the edge of the plate. Hold it in position. Again, the number two tool to trace out that particular design, just that element, because that's what Linda's going to showcase for us next week. No pressure, Linda, if you're watching. <laughs> Linda is a fantastic teacher. Her voice is so calming and relaxing. 
and she's got so much knowledge. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. See, and then we're going to complete that so that once you've done all four sides, you can rent up with something like that. Okay, so just to recap, if you're using the large nested squares, see that I wrote on it large because there isn't much in it, you're going to line up the inner part. So if I do this slowly, then you can watch it on rewind. And then the outer line is up with the edge. I mean, it, you know what? If it's not perfect and it's not exact, who's going to know? Really? And you're using the straight line down here as your guide. And then the outer line goes up to the edge of the plate. Trace it out, spin it round, and do that four times. Okay. And for me, that's pattern building. And I, I love it. So that's the large. And then I'll just recap the small one once more. So the small one, the inner line is on the edge of this second box and the edge of this box. Okay. Nice and easy. It is easy, honestly. It's not, it, it may look difficult, it, but it isn't. Because just try it on a piece of parchment. And if it doesn't work, keep this. And we can use this to practice that technique that Linda's going to show us next week. So don't throw it away. Keep it. So it's all about, yet we kept it nice and simple for the bookmark. And we've kept it nice and simple with, I mean, this isn't difficult. It's just about just getting your head, but using the plate to guide you to make it easier so that you can repeat that design. And I know the lovely Jane Telford, she loves to do pattern building as well. And Ken, I saw that Ken said, that's where he started with Clarity all those years ago with the Clever Corners. And that's where I started as well. That pattern building of just ink stamp, ink stamp, turning it around to create it. So I love that type of thing. And when you look at the designs on this plate, you can do it with all of them. It's just about getting that positioning right and that guide. And once you've done it once, then it's easy to replicate. It really, really is. So for next week, what we need to have, if you want to join along, is to have a completed design like this. And this is the key element for next week with the lovely Linda. Okay. And it, it's all about, this is where Linda's really going to focus. And we're going to have a look at this beautiful, I call it like faux effect veins or lines, but it really gives that depth of sort of light and darkness. Okay. So if you don't want to do this particular card itself, because we will be working with this, then just trace out this design itself, just exactly like that. But remember to do this one in the number two tool. Okay. Hope I haven't scared you all off now. <laughs> but I thought, you know what, let's do a little, something a little bit different. Because with this plate, there's so much on there. And when you look at the designs, and we're going to showcase this on TV next month, this plate. And when you see what the design team have done it, if you haven't got it by then, then you'll definitely get it then. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you've picked up a couple of tips and tricks, maybe just how to put the um, the finished piece into the bookmark sleeve, how to maybe look at the Pico cutting again. If you want to see how the colouring was done, then you can watch last week where we did that. And don't forget, we've got the, the Perga colour pens on special offer. Um, what else have we got on the list? The Wigig. Oh, yeah, the Wigig. When it's gone, it's gone. Um, special offer. If you buy anything and you spend over £30, you automatically get Barb's gorgeous Toscana papers. So this would be great in the back of a bookmark with purples and lilacs for colouring in as well. So, um, so I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope you'll come back next week and join myself and the lovely Linda Williams. I'm so 
stoked and excited about that. Um, until then, stay home, stay happy, stay creative. And I'll be in the shack with Barb tomorrow at 10 o'clock. So if you've got any questions, just give me a shout tomorrow and I'll try and answer them. Big thank you to the lovely Jilly, um, who's been helping you out with all the links to all the different products. And um, I really look forward to seeing you next week. But if I don't, I've, otherwise I'll see you tomorrow. So take care, stay safe and enjoy the rest of your week. Bye-bye.